Taking a look at this validate form method, it's starting to get a little bit hairy and a little long. If we had multiple input fields on this form, maybe let's say we had 10, this would start to get incredibly long and start to confuse our class code a lot. We can break this down a little bit and kind of go through some ways to simplify it. If we break this down to the core of what it actually does, you can see that there's a lot of repeating code here. One, we're going to grab an input field by name. Then we're going to clear that input field, errors. Then we're going to figure out the type of error and assign that type of error message to a variable. And that variable is what's going to be displayed on our template. Let's see if we can't clean this up and go through some loops so that we can always make sure that these don't have to expand out into multiple different lines and multiple different blocks when we wanted to add new input fields. We're going to add two objects to the top of this class. Right now, let's get rid of name error and username error, and we'll call a new object called form errors. And right now we have name, and there's no error when we start this class, and username, which is also blank. We're also going to create another object, and we'll call it validation messages. And this object, we're going to break apart into name, and we'll have the type of error in here, required, name is required, min length, name must be three characters, and max length, name can't be longer than six characters. And we'll do the same for username. Required, username is required. Now we've moved a lot of the information that we need outside of this validate form method and up into the top of our class. The cool thing about this is that we can actually grab validation messages from maybe a service or some external place that isn't this class. And that's how we can grab different languages for these validation messages. So bear with me here, we're going to go through and loop over this object, and then we're going to look for errors based on name or username. Once we find an error, we're going to look through the validation messages and match that error and grab that message. This way we can save ourselves from writing all of this code for every single type of error and every single field that we have. Let's delete all this and we'll start writing it here. First we need to loop over the form errors field names. And so we'll do for let field in this dot form errors. So this is going to loop through everything inside of form errors. We're going to loop through name and username. First order of business is clear the input field errors and grab input field by name. So this dot form errors field is equal to blank. So we're clearing that out of form errors then we're going to grab that input, and we're going to let input equal this.form.get field. In our case, if we loop through the first one, we would get name. So we would have form errors name is blank. So we're clearing that. Then we're going to this.form.get name. Let's move all these comments down into our loop. Now that we have that input field, we're going to make sure we only add a validation message if that input field is invalid. So we'll do if input.invalid and the input is dirty. 
just like we did earlier. Let's take a break here and we'll console log input so we can see each of the inputs here. Let's go take a look at our application and see what this console logs out. It would be helpful, you know, to actually break this out to the right side. Perfect. So now let's look at our reactive form. If we start typing in here, we have a form control and we can see our input is logged out. Let's open up this form control. We have errors, it is required, is true. If we type into it again, we can see another one for errors, min length is there and we have the actual length and the required length. What we're going to do next is look through the errors and make sure that that type of error exists. If it does exist, we're going to grab the validation message and apply it to that form errors object. So we're going to figure out the type of error. We're going to loop through those errors since there could be multiple ones for let error in input.errors, which is that errors object that we just saw in the console log. So we're looping through the errors. The errors that we saw were required and min length. We're going to say this dot form errors field is equal to this dot validation messages. And we're going to look at the field, in our case, name, and we're going to look for the error. Let's run through the logic one more time here. I know this can get a little confusing. We're going to loop through all the fields inside of form errors. So here, let's just take name, the first one, as our example. We're going to look through, grab that form control using name, and we're going to say if name is invalid and the name input is dirty, then we're going to look at the name inputs errors object. Right now, let's say the required error is in place. So we're going to do this.formerrors.name is equal to this.validationmessages.name required. So we're going to look for validation messages name required and that's the message we're going to get and we're placing that in here. Now we can go ahead and use that in our HTML. Instead of name error we now have form errors dot name. And down here we have form errors dot username. Let's make sure that works and then we'll talk about why this is actually better than what we had before. If we type in a letter, name must be three characters so we can see that our error messages are working like they should be. Go past six, we see that error and name is required as well. Username errors are also working perfectly. So why is this actually better than what we had before? If we wanted to add a new input field, all we would have to do is add it here. Let's say we wanted their email. If we add it here, email, and then add it to the validation messages, and last one to the form builder, then we don't have to redo all of our validation and add more lines to validate the email. Everything is going to happen for us automatically with this validate form method. This way we can just build the form the way we want and not have to worry about reconfiguring our validation every single time. Let's remove that since we're not going to do that fully. And now we have our form which is reactive. We have a way to grab validation messages, which we could do externally if we wanted. We have our simplified ng on init. And we also have our own validate form method, which can accommodate as many fields as we like. Now we've talked about form group and we've talked about form control and we've used some of the validators. Next, let's look at how we can use form array to add multiple different things to our current form.